Exactly, yeah. So, like, uh, final grade. All right, cool. And we can just do that on... Uh, I'm sure Ferranki likes doing stuff like this. He could come up with some cool animation for when we... Yeah, he'll have a good graphic going for each one and sound effects based on whether they're scored well or badly. Yes. All right, yo, yo, yo. It is episode, I think, five of the last time Dratnos and I have successfully uh, tried to rate bosses going into a new raid. We are going to change it up, though, because you all don't get it. We are going to give, like, a report guard grade, kind of, and we'll go over those. Dratnos will go over those in a second as me and uh, tell you what we're rating them on. But basically, the idea is to kind of generally go over the raid fights and also just kind of kind of bounce some ideas off each other and how we think they're going to play out. Yo, what's up, chat? We're doing a little slurp today. We're going to just go through and, I don't know, we've got some ratings for the bosses, and yo. All right. All right, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. All right, okay. So we're going to start with the first boss. I think coming from Dragonflight, I think Dragonflight, this is a super weird thing to be good at, but I feel like they had a lot of really good first bosses. Like, we've been, we've been, we haven't had an absolute stinker of a first boss in a long time, right? Yeah, I think they were all bangers in, in Dragonflight. That's definitely true. Mm -hmm. Actually, even going back to Shadowlands, they were all pretty good too, like, for different reasons, different types of good first bosses. It's been since, like, Hellfire Assault, where there was one that everybody hated, but BFA had some pretty bad BFA ones too. BFA had, like champions. yeah, uh, Champions of the Light. A lot of people right now are immediately about to point out that they thought the first boss of Sepulchre was bad, but we want to point out that on Mythic, that boss was actually just fine, and you're thinking of the heroic version, uh, which, which is right. uh, admittedly very, very bad. I um, think that's probably good to clarify in general, is we are mostly talking about Mythic today. That's, that's where we're at for, like, all the bosses. Uh, we are, yeah, exactly. And we will have some Mythic testing to play in the background as we, uh, as we are looking at this. Uh, so starting with Ulgrex, uh, let's just talk, I guess, about the concept. So, so the way this fight plays out is there's just like, uh, you know, they've got some, some, there's some webs on the ground. There's some green stuff you want to spread out from other people, but also remove the webs. If you get hit by the webs, you get stunned. Boss does a few other first boss mechanics, including a little suck that is actually you have to get kind of away from the boss for. And then the intermission is you kill a bunch of ads and then you have to like take the meat from those dead ads and feed the boss or something. Is that right? And then and then you just repeat P1 after that's over. But also the boss learns these like crazy... What's the lore? How did the boss learn these crazy shadow abilities? Who did he learn this uh, from? Zalatath maybe? I don't know. There's, there's a great question. Like I just don't understand how this bug learns how to do all this. <laughs> but uh, okay. What are, what are you thinking for so, initial impressions of this? The concept I think is fine as far as first bosses go i found the execution to be kind of annoying uh because you've got this fight that is offering you this ad spawn which should be a fun aoe cleave moment but they kind of spawn staggered and you're having to move and, and they're super far from the boss like like look at this picture right yeah. here this is how far you have to take this to the boss to get him out of this phase and it's not like everyone just takes one and it's over you have to make like multiple trips it's it's not great, I I think. Um, I agree. Yeah, I think I think that this is like is the concept it's not going to be particularly fun to replay. Is the concept even good though? Like the concept is basically. I mean, they've done this before, where it's like first boss, there is one phase, and then there's like another phase, then you go back. It's like these repeating two facing. They did it with Aranog. They did it with Shriekwing. They've like this. There are good bosses that have this kind of format. Uh, even though the concept of this, I guess, is slightly different. But I don't know. I would say the concept is pretty mid, right? It's like a not trying anything. Yeah. It's been done before. Probably like a C, maybe something like that. I don't think it's a particularly compelling like version of this idea. Yeah, like Aranog was cool, right? You, you're literally like, we got to kill this wall before it gets to us. That that was sick. Whereas here, it's like, yep, yeah, there's some bugs. You know, they're small, they're annoying, they're all over the place. Have fun. I think. Do you think the execution? What would you rate the execution? I I think the I, execution's even lower than the concept. Like I. Yeah, like a C minus D plus something like that. Yeah, I'll put D. Uh, yeah, that not not good. And replayability, I think that might get the worst grade here because, like, just think about not the first time you're killing this, which I guess maybe isn't going to be, like, a super impactful moment for your life because it's the first boss. But, I mean, you're you're going to be, like, loading in every week to, like, just do damage in this phase and then just, I don't, um, I don't know. Think about it, though. If you're not someone who has to take all the stuff in, maybe it's just, like, you get to do mass AoE. And that's nice, right? Like that. That's even then they're like do. they're spawning staggered, so you're kind of like, should I use my cooldowns now or wait for another ad to spawn? And then by the time you wait for another ad to spawn, another one's died, and and then your raid leader's yelling you to take the thing to the boss, but you're trying to do damage, and then it's like, and then it just becomes a boss where you don't care about your performance at all, and I, I don't think that's great. And yeah, like it's gonna be fine due to the 
fact that it's the first boss, and so you're just it's never gonna be like one that you're like, oh gross, we have to re-kill this boss and like we're gonna wipe to it. Like, oh, Timmy's out this week and Johnny's in, and so we're in trouble because he doesn't know the fight. Like that's that's not gonna be a problem here. So I think it's sort of immune to the worst replayability problems that some bosses have, just by virtue of being an early boss, but I definitely wouldn't give it any bonus points for any anything there. Yeah. Okay. Uh replayability D C seems fair. Something like that. D plus again. Uh, Slimy Elitist and Civilian probably aren't going to be too different on the first boss, because it's the first boss. The difference between a Slimy Elitist and a Civilian doesn't matter. I guess we also didn't really explain our grading scale to you. We talked about this before we started this, but basically the idea is, um, we want to do concept and execution, which we've talked about. Uh, replayability kind of is understood. Like, like, replayability could be something like Kurog, right? Like, I don't think Kurog's concept, or Kurog's concept is potentially really good, the execution was really bad, but it was really... You didn't. You weren't mad anytime you were doing Kurog, right? So like, there's there's different parts of this. A uh, Council of Dreams. I think Council of Dreams' idea was cool. The execution was bad. You were a duck for too long. Replaying Council of Dreams and trying to stack the bosses when they poured around. It's horrible, right? Um, that's true for all all levels. So I don't know. I don't even know if this would. We seems like we're kind of rating the. We could even just do the final grade here and just have that be across the board. For do you think a civilian would yeah, experience this? Yeah, I don't think it's really appropriate for early bosses to think too much about because it's just the experience is just not all that different, right? Like, I mean, it is for in some cases if they have really hard early bosses, but uh, I don't suspect that this is going to be one of those. So okay, so I, so fine. Can, can probably even just skip this for for this specific one. What what uh what do you think the final grade here would be? Yeah, D D plus. I don't know. I'm trying to I think. I think this is going to be a pretty So bad Hellfire first Assault boss. would be an F, right? That's yeah. one of the worst bosses ever. And then this is only slightly worse than that. Maybe a C. I don't know. Yeah, I, like, think so. I don't think I don't think it's going to be that bad. I just don't think it's going to be a fun first boss. That's it's going to be fun first boss. It's going to be the worst first boss in years. And and right, I, I think it's going. You're going to have to go back a while to find a boss that I think is going to be like less fun as a first boss in this one. Yeah. So call it like I don't. know. I'm happy with anything in that C to D range, whatever you think. Well, if we can, if if you had one minute. This could be fun too. If you had one minute as a developer to actually make this a little better, what would you do? I uh, maybe just make it so that when you kill the the grubs, it just auto feeds yes, them and like yes. stacks up damage amp on them every time you do it as well. Or or, or there's like twenty mobs and there's twenty people and like everyone grabs one thing and dunks it and it's over and no one has to make multiple trips. But just something that makes that into that's that's by far the worst part of the fight. So yeah, maybe a big movement speed boost while you're carrying one or something could help. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Something like I was about to say damage increase, but then that you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have have your fucking fire mage just like be running ten different things. Okay, uh, okay. Bloodbound Horror, second boss. Um, this is like a... Oh, what's the best way to describe this? It's like... It's kind of like Gore Fiend, but way, way easier. Like, the entire gameplay loop is basically at any given time, 10 people are, in quotes, downstairs. 10 people are upstairs. Uh, everyone, like, every, like, 20 seconds or so gets that little purple spread thing you just saw. The boss has these little follow debuffs. You see those little things. They go on a couple people. You kite them away from other people. Uh... The boss does these beams you have to rotate for. And that's like, that's basically everything on the fight. There's like the spread. There's the thing that follows you and there's the beam. And then every now and then he does like a Kingsbane type frontal. Um, kind of like Anduin where you like, you just send down a group of people to deal with something. And then everyone, like they're kind of, you can see them, but they're in the upside down, I guess is a way to put it. And there are mobs in the upside down that have to die. And if you don't kill them, they constantly spawn things that go into the boss and will kill you. So it's like you're constantly, you can even see it here. Like this person soaks the King's Bane. You see that there's ads that they need to kill. I think you're watching a healer, so it's not a huge deal. But you can see those ads to the right. They have to like, the, the that group is responsible for killing these. And they have like little mini mechanics. But what, anyway, do, do you have any initial thoughts on this before we start grading it? I love this fight. I think this fight's great. Yeah, I actually, this felt like one of those fights that could be somewhat later in the tier and do pretty well. One gripe I would say that I have with it, given its early placement in the raid, is the way that it ramps up in difficulty with each ad spawn feels pretty steep. Because, like, as you as it goes further into this fight, you're getting more and more ads downstairs with each ad spawn, mm -hmm. which means that if you're a group that's doing, like, 20% less DPS than another group, you sort of get this thing where it's like, oh, man, we're going to have to do, like, two extra sets of ads compared to them. And also, those two extra sets we're going to do are going to be way harder than any of the sets of ads they have to deal with because they've got more ads downstairs. Um so I think that it's going to be, I think it's going to do really well on farm, or if you're a good group early on, you're going to be able to just skip a lot of stuff. But I think this is going to be one of those things where it's like actually really hard for kind of 
mediocre low end mythic guilds mm. for quite a while because of how if your damage just isn't great, I think it's gonna it, it scales pretty nastily for an early boss. Okay, but I feel like it. There's also one other mechanic I forgot to mention. It's it's this one, the one where they like push you away from the boss and you have to run back in. That I, don't you feel like this is needlessly too big? Like I, I this may be totally melee brain speaking. Ones where range can still hit the boss and melee just have to run 40 yards away and then go back just seems like needlessly annoying. Like you can you can cause the area denial, you can cause something to be dangerous without being that. I don't even know of a better way to put it other than annoying. I don't know. Um, I just... Yeah, it, it, this boss also has an interesting thing where you your tanks. It's really important how your tanks position because they're setting up the like cutter beam thing, um, and it's like based on like the, whenever you have that, that's something that some guilds are going to struggle with and other guilds are going to, you know, have absolutely no problem with too. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know. It's a fine. I think that part is fine too, though. Again, like the, these feel like kind of fun parts about the fight. Also, it looks like I'm maybe wrong about the ads. Yeah. Right? I, I wasn't aware of you saying that. So I was like, oh shit, I guess they changed something. But someone, someone in chat mentioned that. Yeah, they don't, they don't actually ramp as the fight goes on. Also this beam that That's you're really seeing. Good, yeah. Like, you constantly have two groups of ten that are in different parts of this phase, because, like, if everyone was together, you'd probably, like, really easily cleave each other all the time with that spread mechanic that happens pretty frequently. This, like, beam comes out of the side of the boss. I believe it is fully baitable by tanks, so, like, there's a little yeah. bit of tank skill in this fight of, like, making sure that it's not going to immediately run into your downstairs group who's killing ads, but also not, like, running into your other groups. Like, I think that's, like, kind of cool. Um... I think this is fucking awesome. I, I would... There is another... There was another... I don't know if they changed this behavior as well, but when it was tested sometimes you could kind of get the three ads clumped and sometimes you could get them like all equidistant around the room and that would change dramatically how annoying it was or how difficult it was to kill all of them in time as well so uh that's the kind of thing where again like it's probably not going to matter too much for a lot of guilds you know you're you're probably not it's not going to be a thing where it's like okay we'll kill it as soon as we get good spawns but there definitely will be some pulls where it feels way easier than others yeah uh yeah i think i think there's three spawn spots and and it can kind of just go yeah it would be nice if like the first one was like at least that one was set in stone or something like that um I, I would i would give the concept of this is i mean it's it's gorfian concept but just made for a second boss and i think they did that well without making it too hard so i think the concept of this for me would be like really high i don't know like i don't know if it'd be an, i don't know if it'd be an a like what is a second boss trying to do for a concept if you're trying to rate it for where it is in the raid it's not it's not blowing your socks off it's not incredible but like can a second boss yeah. even be that this feels like a you know if this feels like a good fight design like you know kind of like a staple bread and butter good mechanic well executed yeah so like concept and executed concept would be like the idea that was given to the fight designer before they made it and the execution would be like how well they made that concept i think the concept would probably be maybe like even a b but i think the execution's an a i think this is about as good as you could make this thing yeah i'm i'm down for that okay and then replay i think this is going to perform better okay okay replayability i think replayability is good here like this is this is going to be one of those fights where every week it gets quite a lot easier and faster and more fun because you sort of get double value on extra damage, right? Because you're killing the ads faster and then skipping more ad phases and your all the pushes are like free. So I think this will be a really fun one to rekill where it just gets a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I also think, I think elitists will like this more than civilians 100%. maybe. I think this is like an elitist A and a civilian C or something. I think like I think for civilians this is going to be a somewhat yeah because it's uh, not difficult. It's not boss. primal council. It's not uh, right. assault of the Zakali. It's not it's not that boss you're going to right away and it's like okay we're going to get our box and get out of the raid. I think this one's going to require more from you than that. I, I mean is that what civilian civilians a, a well I mean obviously it's like a meme <laughs> but like I guess throughout all these rankings it's going to be a, for a second boss a civilian might be someone who's like coming in here just to get their mythic loot and leaving where like civilian on one of these other ones might be like really 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 late cutting edge or something like that like i, I don't know because like a, a pug or whatever would never get there um but yeah. yeah it is worth noting that like the fact that this does get quite a bit easier as you out gear it and there's going to be a stacking raid buff thing probably mitigates this from being like too bad for civilians so maybe it's like a c plus b minus even for for them but I'll go to C yeah. plus. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think civilians will hate this. It just may be a harder early mythic boss early in the season. But like yeah. mythic bosses are like really important. Though, like I feel like the way they've made gearing in this game now is like the value of getting any gear off of the first couple mythic bosses is insane. So I feel like you're gonna see more people wanting that at least as opposed to last season. That's true. Hundred um, percent. Okay. So final grade. What do you think? We'll say it. Say it at the same time. You ready? Three, two, one, okay. and then we're gonna say it. A minus. Oh God, fucking. You said three, two, one. Yeah, but I was I was letting you know I was gonna say three, two, one. Uh, you can say on the count of three, man. You're right. You're right. Okay, fuck. All right, we're gonna go with yours then. I agree with you. Okay. I'm stealing your answer. All right, 
On to, on to Sikran. I fucking chat. Did I blow it? I might have blown. I didn't think you were going to be that on top of it. I feel like, fuck me. I'm always ready to give a grade. It's, you know, <laughs> you start a countdown and I'm, I'm Dude, I'm I feel in. like, I, yeah, I feel like you would be a great teacher. Like you would be just an absolutely <laughs> insane. Like, like, like if you were in high school or something and your teacher was sick and Dratnos fucking pulled up into the classroom or like rolled out that dusty ass CRTV and you knew you were about to watch Finding Nemo or some shit. Like that's the, that Dratnos would be that teacher. But he'd also teach you stuff, you know? No, it would just be, it would be, it would be just Shrek every time. We just go in, we watch Shrek. If it's Spanish class, we're watching Shrek with Spanish subtitles. That's all. <laughs> okay. Fuck yeah. All right. So, um, we have Sikran. This is the third boss in the raid. It is, I would say, very close to like a Taros kind of design. Like if you view these little images you see here. I guess I'll just give like a basic overview of how the fight works. The, the boss is super simple. It does like Denathrius level uh, lines right here. You see instant dollars putting them in a line. Uh, if any of those are within five yards of another person on Mythic, you're basically going to wipe. So you have to make sure they're spread out, including from the old ones that are already on the ground. And then you just get a decimate mechanic. They like frontal where you want to destroy as many of those as possible. And then that gives you, and, and very similar to Taros, if you picture these little clones as like Taros, were those stalagmites or stalactites? Are you a, are you a rock guy? Do you know what that is? Uh, are they coming from the ground or They're the coming ceiling? from the ground. Then they're stalagmites. Okay, so. Yeah, because the stalactites have to hold to the ceiling. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, so the stalagmites on Taros that like, they do damage all the time. They radiate like a pulsing AOE damage. But if you break them, you get like a larger AOE damage, but it's for a short amount of time, but then it removes it forever. These images are the exact same concept as that. So the exact same thing. Uh, and then you just are given mechanics to remove them. But instead of Taros, like the tanks just one-shotting all of them on the first tank laser, you kind of have to spread it out a little bit and it's no longer on the tanks, it's on the players. Other than that, the fight is like extremely similar to Taros. It gives you like a little bit of room denial with the ones you blow up and you only have a certain amount of room here. And then you go through it. It does two of those phases. It spawns 12 total things in each decimate line with this strat, it looks like. They're actually getting rid of uh, two per, so like two sets of six. And then the boss does this uh, other thing here, Shattering Sweep. And it tries to kill. It not only will break any remaining and give you that dot, but it also does like increased damage based on that. Um, and that's it. The fight just rotates. Very simple, kind of single, purely single target early boss with a very simple and proven good mechanic. Uh, and it looks pretty cool too. Uh, they also did make, I think it's not a private aura or is it a private aura? The, I think they made maybe it one. turned it into one cause it wasn't initially, but I think they maybe made it one. I think it's fine to be, I, this, I agree with you. I think, I think this is one of these scenarios where private auras are a good thing. I, I'll, I'll, I'll eat my words if that ends up being super annoying and, uh, later on. But I think this is an example, and there have been examples of them making things private auras that actually saved... Like, if you look at the way that Instant Dollars is dealing with this, right, is they're getting those four markers. They're identifying right now, like, who has which. They're like, okay, I see these four people. Okay, we need to make a line. You generally want to put it in front of where the other one is, and we're just looking at each other and doing the mechanic, and they give you enough time to do it. The, the Like, the alternative to that is, like, it's super tight positioning. You have to press some macro. I can just tell you right now, you will never, ever press a fucking macro for this and have, like, marks you have to go to, for example. I just don't think the mechanic requires anything like that. So I, I think that's not a... Uh, a, something to be worried about, but certainly could be wrong. Uh, or they could change it. Uh, okay, that's the whole fight. And then at the end, you die. We, I think... I don't know if this boss actually has in range. I think you just run out of room eventually. Or it should realistically always die before that ever becomes the case. If it was later, it's, it's like you're seeing them get to the end here, right? They would probably run out of room in like one more mechanic set. Like if all of these blew up, there would be no playable room, which is like, I think an ideal time for it to die. Um, so right, Dranos, what are your, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, this, I think is, it's great to put some bosses like this early in the raid, midway through the raid. Like it's simple. It doesn't ramp up in difficulty. So it's a nice kind of change of pace from the bosses that do that. And you just learn the fight. If you can do the fight for the first 30 seconds, you can do the fight for the rest of the fight. And I, it's not got a lot of mechanics, but the mechanics are, I think, correctly important and there's like a little bit of strategy you can maybe set up some traffic rules set up some kind of ideas of how people should think about moving but mostly you just kind of got to play you do this fight without any weak cars right you don't need any any weird stuff you just move right um 
So I'm I'm pretty hyped about this one. This one I think is I don't think it's going to be a lot of pulls. I think in particular this is going to be the kind of fight that you know there's not a, a lot to learn or optimize. You just sort of do it, and then if you're a good guild, you probably do it in like ten pulls or less, something like that. Because um, there's just really not that much more you can like. There's not much that is hard to understand about this, right? Or that is going to take much getting used to. But uh, I still think I think this is like this is the kind of fight that I think is really great to put in the raid a few times even. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, I think this is the, the you're talking about concept. I'm just going to go ahead and say the concept here is an A+. I think the early raid, when you do an early raid style boss like this or Taros, it, it just hits every time, right? As long as you don't do it. Like, for example, if they made you press macros or whatever, that would be horrible and that would make this instantly bad. But like the, and that kind of goes in, I guess that's more of the execution because the execution would be them adding that, right? Um, but like the concept is is great. I, I I will say I'm a little down on the execution though. So when you make a tarot style mechanic, over the course of two minutes, they're gonna give you twelve things you have to blow up. And uh, if you leave any of them, if you don't break them on time or whenever you can, you are punished by having more ramping AOE damage, and you like obviously significantly take less damage if you break them as soon as possible. Right? It's the point of fights like this. Taros, you could leave up every stalagmite in the fight. But if you did, you would eventually just take too much rate damage and die. So you have to plan out cooldown phases to, like, remove them and get rid of them. That That's what makes these fight cool. So this fight has that set up, but they also added an extra punish, in my opinion, for no reason. So the way they made this boss work on the last testing is, like, if you go into that shattering sweep with literally any of them remaining, what should happen is it should be really dangerous and you should you know, be able to, like, heal through it and play for it, but, like, you've now taken extra damage for this long because you never did that. Or, oh, you missed that earlier, you have to deal with that forever now, whatever. But they added an extra punish for a third boss that I don't think is necessary, which is, I think, basically, if you ever get a Shattering Sweep with one or even two or whatever remaining on an early boss, you just, like, fucking die. Like, it's your pulls over. It wasn't Ooh. working in the last testing. It was just basically, like, you're instantly dead if this happens. And that could have changed. I actually haven't read the changes on this in this recent beta build. Um, but that was the case. And in my opinion, that is an extra level of punish that doesn't need to exist on a fight like this because the punishment is at a base level baked in. Um, and I think that sucks. I definitely agree. I, I, I missed the most recent round of testing, so I didn't see that, but I, I agree with you that it shouldn't wipe you. And I suspect that the reason they would add that would be because they're kind of worried that like, okay, this is just too easy and simple. And so we need to put some more like lethal stuff in here but i don't know maybe some yeah someone in chat said maybe I was, some kind of dodge mechanic yeah someone in chat sense, said i, I was under the impression the 500 percent extra damage happened if she blew up one of the use stack too that does happen i believe this also happens on the shattering sweep as well that mm -hmm. well not that exact same mechanic but like a similar level raid wipe uh thing it wasn't working in the last testing and here's to hoping that that was not working on purpose right <laughs> and it's just yeah. not supposed to be that so like i'm, I'm just gonna I believe that's how it works. So I'm going to rate the execution, I think, a little bit lower than that because I think that's just an unforced error, as you like to say. That is uh, that's a good comm. Okay. Um, but the concept is great. Execution. And, and replayability, fucking Astro Banger, right? A, a plus. Oh, yeah. You're never going to be mad pulling up to this boss. I it think it's going to be a great replayability boss, except it, it is going to be frustrating to wipe too if you do have like the the five yard thing. But I mean, honestly, you can't, you can't, ask for better than this for replayability yeah uh i still think slimy elitist a plus civilian if it's not a private aura which means you can't it's a private aura, which means you can't just have four marks you have people sign to plus you'd have to keep placing those marks as you move throughout the room i think someone doing this for loot might i mean you would just constantly wipe to people again the the whole place these things in a line to where they're easy to cleave with this mechanic but also um but also not being within five yards of other people without assigned markers, I could see something causing some annoying wipes. So I think it would at least be like not the plus in this, right? Can't you foresee that being like something where it's just like, oh my God, I can't fucking Brad keeps, I just, sorry, I just read Brad on the screen. Brad's probably great, but uh, I know Brad, Brad is great. But like, like, oh, this guy keeps putting um, his thing too close to mine and we just keep wiping, right? Um, I could see that being annoying. I was going to rate this the other way around, where I would have thought this would be better for civilians than Slimy Elitist, just because it, it seems like the mechanics are... It's all concentrated in just doing that one job, right? Which, obviously, there are some guilds where you can't... Yeah. Somebody just can't do their one job, but... You know, for a boss that is going in this slot in the raid, I kind of feel like this is going to be one of, one of the ones where, like, you know, Liquid and Echo are going to be one-shotting this encounter, right? And there's just not actually all that much gameplay for Super Slimy Elitists, and then... I think for regular guilds, it's there's not much danger of this being like a 300 pull disaster 
you know, or even like a 50 pool disaster. Like I think that if it's getting one shot by Liquid and Echo, it's getting like 20 shot maybe by uh mid ce guild something like that i think that oh that's i mean that's a good number yeah, yeah. okay so you so you'd say a plus for civ then too i'd say i'd say a plus for civ yeah and i i think a plus for Sw slimy latest is good too although i would i'd maybe be down just for I'll, a just because like I'll, I'll maybe it's there. not quite enough I agree with there you. yeah i agree with you all right on the count of three we're giving the final grade okay okay all right three two one a a okay wow fuck yeah did you did you say a when you heard me say a because of discord delay or did you hear me first i i, I said it exact same time as you perfect okay it was yeah. just discord delay love that yeah, yeah uh okay on to the next fight rationan uh would you like to explain this fight for these beautiful people yeah so basically rationan uh is this bug thing and we fought it at the end of the dawnbreaker uh, the dawnbreaker dungeon we got it to 60 percent or something and then it fled to the raid um and then we have to kill it at this time um not really sure why it sort of seems like we could probably just walked around it but it's all good it's there we got to pull it we got to kill it it <laughs> sort of sits on the edge of the room and flies around to different spots pings were also permanent during testing here which i thought was pretty fun so <laughs> id has a lot less pings on their ground than we did let me tell you that for free um this you just get basically like the the key mechanic is you get the three lines that you have to spread and move it so that you're creating a safe triangle in the middle of the raid and then they kind of go out and don't do anything and then there's some webs and some ads and some swirlies and you kill them and the boss kind of dies after a while of that yeah yeah this boss is a uh, is a boss for sure I, it and then you do that, and then it, and then the boss moves. I'll fast forward it here. Yeah, it and does move, and there's a soak. Everybody has to get in the soak, or else that's bad. Yeah, hilarious too. I think if like you miss even like a couple of people, I think I don't remember the exact number of people, but it it yeets you off the edge. Like, yeah, it's, it, it sort of goes from like nothing, nothing, nothing to like turbo grip pretty quick. Um, yeah, this this to me. Okay, so okay, let's th that is the whole boss. By the way, let's think concept. I don't think they were given a lot to work with. They were, the, I guess, like, maybe... Okay, we could talk about this with concept. This is a boss you fight in a dungeon. The reason it starts at 60% is because you go from 100 to 60 in a dungeon. I think for some people, especially, let's say, like, hunters, who they're only bu buffed to the raid, are <laughs> people who do damage from 100 to 80. Um, I guess the counter-argument you could make is that they're very, very good on the dungeon version of the boss because 50% of the boss, you're making everyone do a lot more damage or whatever. Um, so, like, there's that. It has to have, like, similar... It has very similar dungeon mechanics. Uh, like, this poison line thing is something you see in the dungeon. Uh, I don't know if they were given a ton to work with here. Is that fair? Yeah, I think they were basically just like, hey, do the dungeon boss, but a scaled-up raid version of it. That's right? what it feels like, right? It This feels like a... That's the... It feels like a dungeon boss that someone was like, hey, make this into a raid boss in five minutes, and then they did. That's what this boss feels like. Yeah, I, I will say, like, one thing that I, in particular, made it feel like a dungeon boss to me was just none of the mechanics really feel important, you know? Y like, yes. They're kind of all just there, and like, oh, you put a web in the middle of the raid, it's like, okay, whatever, right? Just, you know, try not <laughs> Dude, to do that, but it's, it's okay. I... This is going to maybe be really disrespectful, but, like, I, I feel like this is, like, an early look into, like, what AI-designed raid bosses would look like. Like, they just fed it a bunch oh, of... That is, they were like, that we, is so toxic. We just, we just want you to make a, like, mid-tier raid boss, and we're going to feed you a thousand mid-tier raid bosses from every MMO, and then this is what it came up with. I, I, I Probably I shouldn't have said that, but, like, the, it truly is, like, uninspiring. The mechanics don't really mix together very much. Boss flies around, you follow it, you do the little triangle thing. I guess they give you, if there's anything, they give you usually some mechanic that matters that you need to spread for during this, so there's a reason to give you more room, but it's definitely just there. I don't know. Uh, what's your idea for concept? Yeah, like a D. Like this, at least during the dungeon version of this fight, you have the kind of movement and the light, and like there was stuff going on here. Like here, there's just really not anything happening yeah because like this is i don't know where are we where is rationan in uh like previous raids like what's the boss where rationan is is it is it it's like it's where rashok and forgotten experiments were it's where senarth it's where senarth was it's where lairdar and it's before lairdar and naimu right it would would it have been it's yeah between like Volkaros and Laridar are between Council and Naimu. Yeah, it's a different of. it's a different raid design. There aren't like wings really. Um so it's kinda hard to compare it. It's definitely not like a mid tier wall type. It's before Smolderon for sure, and it's like somewhere in the Laridar and Naimu right before their category. I just feel like I don't know, like both of those bosses were trying to 
accomplish something. Obviously, you can't compare many things to Rashok. Like Forgotten Experiments maybe is kind of close. Different different concept, but similar similar levels of mid. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna try. It's kind of hard to separate concept and execution here because the con I don't think there is a concept. It was just like make a raid boss. That's the concept. I don't know. Uh, and then execution certainly isn't any better. So if you put concept at D, I don't know. I feel like execution. No, this is. I think execution on this fight's really good. Interesting. Because it starts at sixty percent health, so you get more execution time. That is fucking insane. That reminded me of a dad joke I saw earlier on Twitter. That someone said uh, they're they were watching the like gymnastics routine, and one of the. <laughs> I saw this one as well. Did you see this? <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. the Frank will find this. He loves this. The the it, they said on the broadcast after Simone Biles like got gold or whatever. They're like, this you're gonna be telling your kids about this routine. And then some dad waited two minutes and then told his daughter. So I guess we got to talk about this floor routine <laughs> or something like yeah. that, right? <laughs> Just an absolute banger dad joke. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. You think the execution's good? Better no, B I, C D. I don't know. Man. I don't know. Call it a C. Whatever. Okay. I don't think it's offensive, but I don't think it's inspired either. Okay, replayability, I will maybe give it points for this. I, I feel hmm. like you're going to pull up to Rashanan, and it doesn't do anything annoying if you're just looking to hit a boss and do damage on it. or Yeah, you're never going to have to like set up any RT note for this fight, right? Like, God bless, that's going to be nice at least. And also, there's a big spawn of adds that you can you know, roll for who gets to AoE on them, and that'll be kind of fun. Yeah, actually, yeah, I mean, maybe, uh, like, big AoE happens, pure single target, not a lot of annoying downtime, you, you get to the boss pretty quickly. I honestly want to say, this is kind of similar to Kurog, where, like, the boss is built like shit, but, like, I could totally see people being like, you know what, I'm just never mad when I pull up the rat. I feel like this would be, like, a B or an A, honestly. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe B plus, a little B plus. B plus. All right, Slimy Elitist. What would Slimy Elitist? Gotta be, like, this has got to be a pretty low score for Slimy Elitist, right? Like... Like, this is the kind of fight that we don't like. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Whereas for civilians, I actually think this will do pretty well because it's the fact that it just doesn't have any high coordination mechanics, anything like that, um, yeah. should make it pretty popular. So I, I would be even ha happy with like a B plus or something for civilian score. Okay. And like that. Okay. Final grade for this boss. Okay. So when I say on the count of three, is it one, two, three, say it? Or is it, what, what, let's, let's, what do you want to do? Because chat was making well, fun of me. Because you told me to say on the count of three after I did three to one. So then I did that and then three to one. And then they're like, well, you're supposed to go up to three. So which which one do we do? Let's just do it. We'll do it on two. No. No, not that. Just with... Okay. Do you want me to count up or down? Uh, uh, you, can't, you can't be tasking me with these sorts of important decisions. Okay, I'm, I'm counting I'm down. I'm counting here. down okay. three, two, one. We say the thing, okay? Okay, we're, are we saying it on one or after one? After one. Okay. Yeah. All right, final I'm, grade. I'm stressed, man. It's okay. Final grade, three, two, one, C. B minus. What's in between a fucking C plus? Fine. It's a C plus, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Beautiful. All right, Brood Twister. This uh, okay. has a lot going on. Uh, So basically, the fight, there are three sections of... There's three different types of eggs... Uh, there's one that spawns little gahoonies, little little ads that fixate you, and if they infest you, they'll spawn two more, they'll pop out of you, you get the idea. One is a stationary worm that has casts that need to be interrupted. And the third one is a spider that has a lot of health and tries to kill your tank. Uh, how this boss works on Mythic is there's three, like, black blood containers, and there's three sections of the room, and in each section, that part of the room will empower that kind of ad for the rest of the fight. And also that section has more spawns of that specific ad. So like every time you empower a new ad for the next like two minutes when you're in that part of the fight, you will be dealing with more of the empowered ad. And then by the end of the fight, they're all empowered. So it's kind of like a build a boss. Like if you think your guild is really good at dealing with the Gahoonies or something, you would maybe do the Gahoonie thing first. I know we can deal with these every time, right? Or you might be like, okay, it's actually more boss damage to do this one. You can do the boss differently than other people. Uh, and that's kind of cool. And the way you deal with this, if you're watching it, is this is like, basically there's like a bunch of debuffs that go out. You have to coordinate with one other person. There's eight debuffs and you want to break four eggs at a time. Uh, you have to like Venn diagram your purple thing over the egg and they need to as well, but also not cleave each other. Uh, they made this a private aura initially. This was as far as I know, up to this moment, this is not a private aura. You can put markers down and a weak aura can assign this. Uh, I think this was an excellent decision. This would have been a mandatory macro situation. And I think anytime, do you agree with this? Anytime there is a scenario where 
the boss design forces you to press a macro to deal with a private ore mechanic, that mechanic should not be a private ore. Is that is that correct? Or, or it should be designed differently? Yeah, I would say generally the best answer is almost always to not have the mechanic work like that at all. Correct. But it's better to have it not be a private aura than to have it be a private aura. Like that, the private aura, not making it a private aura is like a, a fail safe. Whereas if it's a private aura, it can be real bad. And they did that here. The the feedback from the first testing of this fight was this as a private aura is horrible. And then they literally removed it and made it not a private aura. So that is, are there better solutions? Yes, but that is certainly a better one than leaving it the way it was. Uh, and then the other, there's just some other random mechanics on this fight. The majority of the mechanics are what adds your spawning and why and that is perfectly that is completely uh, almost completely up to you i'll get to that in a second and then you have some dispel mechanics you got to dispel these little webs on people if you dispel them on other people it'll spread so you have to get away and like call for a dispel uh and then you have to like coordinate which eggs you want to pop and instead of like brood keeper where it's like the same three or four people you kind of have to just like watch people around you you see instant dollars they're like marking it and like you're just going to be told to go to x with yours or something like that so i don't think it'll be super difficult to achieve um I do have one issue with this fight, and that is that it's kind of the illusion of choice. So what they've chosen to do is, this is the black blood container, this big pile of goo here that grows. When this goo grows and touches an egg, it will, it, it like basically wipes you in Mythic. It gives you this stack that hits really hard. Like it, you could probably live through one, but let's just assume it's a white mechanic. Pro most likely will be with low gear. That makes it so you don't really have a lot of choice of which eggs you want to actually pop like you should. Like, you could maybe feel like, oh, I want to just do all the big spiders all at once and pop lust. Or I want to, uh, well, I don't know why you'd ever want to spawn worms all spread out from each other. But let's say you want to do that, you could do that. Or if you want to spawn all the gahoonies and use your mass scripts and all your AOEs, whatever, you can do that. The fight doesn't really let you do that. It gives you way less choice because as the eggs are like, as the black blood is growing, you have to make sure you at least get this second row of eggs out of the way, which have a very specific spawn set in every single area. So you like the re you really every single set you can choose between like one or two different things. And I personally, this is maybe in the slimy elitist category, but I personally feel like the fight would just be way cooler if at the end of the two minutes this whole thing filled up, but you actually just had two minutes to deal with it in whatever way you wanted. I, the choice is just really cool to me, I think, um, to have different ideas where, like, you can't really have different ideas. Um, and that's this whole fight. You go through, you do, uh, you go around in a circle, and that's it. Dranos, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think it's, like, particularly satisfying to do the egg popping because, like you said, you're, you know, you're just going to kind of have some marked and then you're gonna have a week or tell you which one to go to and like that's better than pressing a macro but it's still not good correct i don't think it's gonna be satisfying to screw it up and i don't think it's gonna be satisfying to do it correctly um i don't think you're gonna like feel like oh yeah we just got to get better at this like you're just gonna yell at somebody for not <laughs> getting to their marker that they have like 10 seconds to go get to or whatever that's gonna be annoying um the activating of the ads like it feels it felt to me as well like there was a pretty clear best order to do this which was probably like parasite spiders worms the worms in particular really obnoxious to give them more health because they're spawning all spread from each other and so that's the ones that you can't cleave down so giving them more health seemed like it would be probably the most bad thing to do but that's like an early guess and i could be wrong about that which i think it would be sweet if if like the top you know, 30 guilds in the world do this in different orders. I think that'd be really cool. And if, if there's an order that people do differently in the lower end compared to the higher end, that would also be really cool. It sort of feels to me like it won't be like that, but... Well, uh... I don't think it will be like that because they've removed the choice. Like, the the, the choice, the only choice is which, which thing you go in first. It's not... Which, like, you could... Let's say, what did you say you think, like, you would do worms last? Okay, so let's say everyone does worms last and whatever one of the two you picked first, right? But, like, within those sets, they could choose different ones they want to do all together, right? You'd want to maybe deal with each ad type individually. You, oh, yeah. You actually can't do that. Like, they remove the ability of doing that by the blood growing during the phase, which I just think is... Yeah, I I also think... So, it's not really that big of a problem for Mythic, but I'm, I think that during heroic testing as well, it was a wipe if you ever accidentally missed an egg, which seemed very harsh. During Mythic, it was like, it's like understandable for it to be that harsh. Although again, I don't think particularly fun. So I don't know. I like, I don't, I don't think it's unfair for them to ask that level of execution from us, but I don't think it's going to be particularly fun to do. Yeah. yeah it's I like agree. the wrong kind of hard, you know, where it's like the difficulty is fine, but the way that it's difficult isn't going to be fun. Okay. So let's talk concept. I, I think the concept of this, the build a boss concept is always a, is always a huge W for me. Like, when someone was given this boss, they're like, hey, we want you to do this. You're going to spawn some ads, and there's different parts of different rooms. They empower differently. It's the, 
what the Inerva concept, the Council Blood concept, the Lei Shen concept, right? The what should have been Kurog concept. Like that that concept for me, I'm also biased though. I'm like, that is my favorite shit of all time. Uh I don't know how you feel, but I, I would give the concept like a very high grade, but I, I know I'm biased, so I'll probably lean more towards your answer. Yeah, I think the concept, like I, I agree with you that that type of boss is good. I don't think though that necessarily like doing it through, you know, three types of ads that you're spawning and then it's like an ad spawn spam type thing. Ooh, so you're not like, an ad, you're not an ad is, fight guy. I mean, yeah, I remember my, when I made my top rate of all time, it was literally all single target fights. It's uh, yeah, it's something where I, I think ads are, I think ads have a place. I like. I think like yeah. a perfect ad fight for me is like not even an ad phase, but like bosses spawn ads that have to be dealt with quickly, but still the main priority is the boss. Like that. That's that's where ad spawns feel right in raid, and that this this kind of goes well. I mean, this fight kind of is that, right? It's just all the time though. It's like permanently your main target. Yeah, I don't. Know. I mean, the interrupting the worms. I, I guess I'm. I think the concept is fine as well. I don't. I wouldn't describe it as like an A plus concept, but I think as well like the callback to Gahoon with the Gahoonies is kind of cool. Obviously, if you didn't like Gahoon, you're not going to like that. But I think that, that I think that's kind of neat. Obviously, it's, it is a big Gahoon. Um, I don't know. I would give it like a B plus or something for concept. Yeah, I like that. Because it has the Build-A-Boss thing, but it's also based around massive ad spawns, which is always really hit or miss. And also, yeah, whatever. Okay, so concept, I, li I like. I'll take your B plus answer. I think the execution is certainly lower than that. Yeah, I, I'm thinking like D for execution. It would be an F if it was still a private aura, but they've at least mitigated that from happening. But okay, let's... again, I just don't think it's going to be a fun mechanic to execute. So I'll ask a different question then. So like if we were to be armchair raid designers for a second and we were to execute this better, it would be, is it some kind of in-game visual for raiders popping these eggs instead of like a, like maybe like, so the change from heroic to mythic is in heroic. They give you four debuffs and then those four debuffs each break one egg but in mythic you need to do the venn diagram thing like i guess maybe the venn diagram doesn't hit because like that just requires so much coordination it's just reaching that level of coordination that has to be managed by something yeah i, I like your cook as well of like letting you choose the order you want to activate the eggs in the area they could also like give you more breaks than you need and then also give you some challenge based on the amount that you're activating so oh absolutely you're exactly right like they're giving you the ability to break exactly four every time bro give you you know what you wouldn't need a week or four let's just say you had 12 debuffs so like you have yeah you know it's, it's like more spreading and it's more raid damage but that's raid damage can always be tuned up or down you but you have the ability to actually do giga sets of ads with cooldowns and also less with less so like the amount of choice is just way better and also it it gives you it's less of a strict requirement to actually break the eggs that's a great idea right now so yeah I, I think that would be a lot better um and then I, I do notice that the boss model's kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, dude. During testing, we kept missing eggs under the boss. Yeah, because yeah, you no, can't obviously see. that's not going to happen. It's, it's, it's not that you can't planning. see the egg. Like, someone could be like, there's an egg under the boss, there's an egg under the boss. But as you're trying to, like, see the other purple circle people around you, you just don't know if there's someone else under there. Or you can't see, like, this camera angle, whoever this player is, actually has a really good camera angle. If you watch a lot of players on this fight, they play at a different camera angle, and they literally couldn't see the other side of the boss. So, like it's pretty tall. Like if you were to angle his camera down a little bit, you wouldn't see any of these people that I'm hovering my mouse over right now. So like you couldn't see the other purple circles. Yeah, it was pretty tough. So yeah, I think that makes sense. Replayability. This is going to be pretty low, I think, because as you get yeah. more and more gear, like it's going to be fighting to get all the pie on all the ads. And then like certain classes are just going to do that and certain classes aren't. I guess you'll yeah, skip it's still a wipe if you screw it up. I mean, yeah, you're going to get to skip the last few egg sets or whatever, but I don't think this is going to be a particularly good fight for replayability. Yeah. Okay. So maybe like a C. It's not going yeah. to be. It's not going to be awful. Like it's. It's going to become less ass over time. And important to mention too for all the replayability, something that might be relevant is they are. So not only are you going to have more gear than what these are tuned for because they added two more mythic track things, but also a month into the raid they're doing the Siege of Orgrimmar ICC buff thing where like I think it's every week or every other week or something you get more power in the raid so the replayability this patch is going to feel significantly different than a lot of uh a lot of ones in the past because of that so uh maybe maybe it's something where like you do some crazy strat and you just like blast these bosses i don't know yeah i will say that the difficulty of this fight doesn't get that much better with more gear because like like yeah okay you can handle the ad spawns a little bit more easily you're going to be able to kill them off more safely but you're still just going to wipe if somebody doesn't stand on their thing and gear doesn't help with that too much yeah um, slimy elitist. Uh, uh, I feel like this one is worse for civilians than elitist because it's just like such a, you know, fiddly kind of fight. 
I definitely um, agree with that. I just don't know how good it's going to be for those people. I mean, I mean, I guess you're kind of like capped at the execution replayability of that. Like, yeah, it wouldn't be an A, right? So it'd be like a something like a I don't know, maybe like a, a B. A C I could see a it being a. I could see it a being B like a, a B minus. Like, okay. Maybe like I, maybe I'm being a little optimistic, but I, I could see like you doing this fight and it feeling fucking amazing when you kill it. I don't know. I don't know where it is in the raid. No, you're right. C plus. We'll go C plus. We'll drop it down. In civilian, C you think it's a lot. Or something? You think it's like a lot worse for civilians. So D plus, something like that. Yeah, like I think this isn't going to be one of those bosses like Smolderon or whatever where you get to it and you're, and you're like, okay, this is going to be kind of fun for us to prog. And uh, obviously Smolderon had challenges too, but like I think this one is just going to be one where your you know guilds get to it and they're going to be like, eh. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, final grade. Uh, count of three, but going down, and we're saying it after one. <laughs> After one, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Final grade in three, two, one, C. C minus. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to you. C minus. All right. Nexus Princess Kaiveza. Oh, fucking boy. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so this fight is pure single target. It's real like shadowy and shit. Uh, the boss is going to give you. Uh, you'll see here. Like, I think it ramps throughout the phases, but let's just say in this testing, it looks like it spawns starting with five. And these, as soon as they drop, are going to spawn a por a portal that's going to suck you. Okay, so these are going to spawn right here. Also, every time you take shadow damage on this fight, you get a debuff that does damage to you for ten seconds. Then at the end of that ten seconds, you shoot out uh shadow in every direction. So obviously that can like chain reaction. It could hit people and then they'll chain and shoot stuff. Uh, so you have to watch for that. And then if you get pulled into any of these uh, little suction things, you instantly die. See these little things right here? They're going to suck you. So you see instant dollars has placed. It's going to look, if you haven't played this, it's going to look strange here. But like basically what's happening is all of these are doing a extremely large suck. And because they're spaced out, one comes from the boss as well, perfectly evenly, you're kind of getting just sucked into the middle of the room. If you were to misplace these or put too many next to each other or too many on one side, you would have like an unstoppable suck and your whole raid would die. So like the placement of these is really important. And I'll kind of go over how that uh, is relevant after this as well. So now this suck is over, what's going to happen is there's going to be like a little shadow man that spawns out of all of them. And that shadow man is going to pick um, a... A person in the raid. Why is it not playing? Okay. It's going to pick someone in the raid. Oh, no. Is the YouTube video screwed up? It just doesn't play this mechanic. And it... Oh, yeah. Something's wrong with the video. Uh, Let me find it later in the fight. Right here. Okay. So, these guys are going to shoot an arrow. You'll know if it's on you. Because uh, you'll yours will be red. You see all these lines are blue. Yours will be red if it's on you. And you just have to aim it wherever. It looks like this group is choosing to turn them all around. Uh, you turn them around, shoot them at the wall. And it's important where you place them because where you place them will determine where the next suck is. So you want to have that suck uh, somewhere where it's not going to kill you, right? Like right now, like you, if you were to have them go in the wrong spot. So it's important where you send each one of them. Uh, the mythic mechanic of this also is three of these little shadow guys will spawn with a mask. And I can't really show you this because the very first one of the fight, um, the, the like video messes up for some reason. Uh, but you have to have those go through the boss. If you end this phase, and I'll show you what the intermission looks like, um, you will, if, if that mask doesn't go through the boss, then you will, uh, you will wipe. So that's like the other thing, like the arrows, some of the arrows have to go through the boss on mythic and it's random which one it is. And you have to kind of react to it potentially. Uh, and then that's the entire phase and that just rotates. Then you have an intermission phase. Intermission phase is like the best description of this is just a, it has fire rack blazes that go out on mythic once every 0.8 seconds. Um, and you just do like a rotate dodge around the room thing. If you cleave and it has scaling raid damage, the raid damage was really small on mythic testing. That's pretty consistent with most things because they want you to see farther in the fight. But um, this will probably absolutely destroy, be huge healing on actual release. And then if you hit someone with a blaze, obviously you'll probably kill them. Uh, and then and then the fight just repeats, except every new phase, there's going to be one extra suck. And obviously that means one extra line, potentially one extra mask that you have to send through the boss. And then you just do the boss long enough. And then once you... Um, hopefully they get a pull to the very end. Um, but like when, when you get to the very end of the fight, it, uh, it like does that intermission you just saw, but then it'll just like keep pulsing the intermission thing. So it's also possible to heal through it, which is like kind of different than like a Rigalon massive bang, for example, where, you know, like it's just over, like it's kind of over, but you can get better at the enrage and actually live a little bit longer, which I actually think is a cooler enrage. 
Uh, but yeah, that, that that's the basis of the fight. Dratnos, what's your what's your impression of this of, the, of this guy? Yeah, it's sick. And, and actually, this is one of those fights where I think it was kind of more sick in testing than it's going to be in practice. Because I do think in practice you're going to have a pretty solid system down for how you're going to place all these things. I mean, ID you can already see with the markers had a pretty good kind of system. But my guild, for instance, yoloed most of this during testing, and like that was really fun. And it it was one of those things where it felt fun and doable to try and yolo these. And like if you get three or four portals on one side and two on the other the suck is still totally manageable even like five and one it was still manageable you're still getting gripped in a fine direction and then like but like charging them through the boss is something where it definitely feels like you're going to want a system for that people getting cleaved by extra stuff is bad and so i, I think that it's going to end up being one of those fights where it's like there's actually it it looks more mechanically interesting than it will be to play where in practice instead of having like oh there's this mechanic where do i go the answer is going to be like oh, I'm going to triangle, right? Like I've got, I got the thing, I'm closest to triangle, I'm going to triangle, or like my weak aura is telling me to go to triangle. Uh, and that I think is, so like, I think the concept is really sick, but I do think the execution of that is, is gonna, is like a little bit less good. Cause I do, I think that, like, I think it'll still be fun to play, but the promise of this fight, at least looking at it for me, isn't quite lived up to in terms of how, how much it's going to be solved. Like where you just do the exact same thing every poll. Okay. I, I, that's interesting you bring that up. Cause I, I don't feel that way because like, I feel like we went through the process of solving it and that was really fun, but you're right that if, if it's just like most people, they pull up to a boss and if you do that, you're just, you just don't, you know, you don't, you just, you just do this thing. It's not like this cool thing you figure out. You're just doing a thing. Uh, maybe that won't be as good. I feel like it won't be as bad with the, with the mask stuff. Um, the, some people in chat pointed out, like after the rework, if you blow up three masks at once, uh, you die. So yeah. That'll happen at the end of the fight, right? Because at the, at the very last phase, you do get five empowered, right? And you only get two chances to clear. So the second one has to be three. I'm um, sure it'll just... I mean, obviously, they're not going to release the boss where that just doesn't add up, right? Like something else probably changed about it later. Or maybe it doesn't ramp or... Yeah, or that's just part of the enrage. Or they change like the amount you get initially, right? So... Uh, yeah. Or... No, I don't think this the enrage. The, the fight has a built-in enrage. Uh, so I don't think so. But but yeah, I, I, I think this concept is great, though. I mean, the concept is basically like hey make i mean people always refer to sludge fist it's not really sludge fist but it's like do that kind of thing and that always rocks right like that the hit rate of that is very high uh so i, I the concept's got to be a plus right god damn and especially the like geometrical sucks and all that stuff like that's sick yeah that definitely is cool execution mm. i mean i'm not i'm not too down on this i just think it's less good than the concept I, i'm still happy to call this like I don't know, A minus. I would say maybe? like an A minus. Yeah. No, I agree with you because I also think like the intermissions are really easy. And the intermissions are sweet though. Like that is as that's gonna be fun to play, those intermissions, right? Like yeah. especially if you're on like a if they add like a, a lot of raid being damage, a fire yeah. mage during that intermission, I feel like you're gonna there's gonna be so much opportunity for like feeling sick. Yeah, kinda. I, I still feel like it's maybe missing some way of the intermission ramping throughout the fight too. Maybe not even yeah, in just ray be. damage, like just but maybe maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe it's better in how simple it is. Uh replayability of this, it's gotta be top tier, right? Your single target boss, you'll kill it a little bit faster. Um yeah. it's gotta be as good as it can be, probably slimy elitist A plus. Uh, I think pretty good for civilians as well. Like I don't think I don't think this is gonna be super offensive to less coordinated groups. because uh, like you just yoink a strat and I think That'll handle most of it, so. Like, A here, maybe two as maybe well. Maybe even, yeah, I don't know. All right, final grade, ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, eight. A plus. I'll defer, A plus. I thought about A plus. Last time. You, you can give it an A. Can There's it one, a. okay, I'll give it an A. It's an A. The A plus version of this is like, it's an all-time great. Kind of depends on how it turns out. I think this is, it's highly tuning important. Oh, for 100%. You, like, the, this fight, if it's tuned well, could easily be an A+. Plus well, I don't for... know. I still feel like a lot of people view Smolderon as, like, one of the better bosses ever. And when we did that boss draft recently, it went pretty high. Yeah. And Smolderon was just Sludge Fist, but it wasn't tuned at all. <laughs> like, you just got yeah. you just got to the end for the first time and you killed it. You didn't have to optimize anything. So, I feel like that matters to only some extent. Uh, or to only some people. Oh, I put Queen Anserac before Silken Court for some reason. It's going to be hard for us to grade Queen Anserac, though. <laughs> That'll be... Uh... Yeah, that's going to be making stuff up. Uh, spoiler yeah. alert, and this whole thing is making stuff up, but that yeah. one's going to be... The veil is going to be even more off. Very made up. Yeah. Silky C. Uh, so they've done two testings of this so far. Uh, the bit of this fight is, like, there's two bosses. They have, like, rotating damage amps. In P1, you get a damage amp on the bug. They also share health. In P2, you get this, like, dispel damage amp on sky and spinner and then in p3 you're like fighting both of them and it's doing a mixture of mechanics from both phases 
Uh, and the intermissions are, and I can show you the intermissions, are, are actually really good. Like, the intermissions are really good. Actually, I don't know if in this mythic testing VOD, if... I mean, I'm almost positive you're not going to see that. Um, so maybe I'll actually want to pull up another... I man, Maybe a viewer can find just, just even like a heroic VOD where you can see through all the mechanics. You won't see any public testing that has it on, gets there a mythic, but... Well, actually, there was one. It's like a Chinese guild that you was using time running gear and they were like literally invincible and they just like had four people they all wiped on the pole and four people just lived until like gig like 10 minutes into the fight um <laughs> that was fun uh but yeah the uh okay so the the basis it's kind of like denathrius like you know how at the end of denathrius you uh have 10 people go in the mirror and 10 people are not in the mirror and then you have to play the fight kind of separated from each other that is the bit of this fight except you do it the entire time. So you'll see on the pull here, you'll see them do that. Uh, you'll see like the, there's little circles around the boss and basically just as soon as 10 people go in each, the circles go away, it picks those 10 people and then that's how you like choose who is in each group. If you run into any one of the opposite team, you both will instantly die. Um, the other kicker of this is that anytime most mechanics happen to you, uh, you will spawn an orb of your color. So you see all the blue people are here, all the red people are here. They are spread out, obviously, because they'd kill each other if they were next to each other. And then they're all going to spawn a blue orb. So blue orbs will just expire and deal raid damage if they are unsoaked. You can only soak orbs of the opposite color. So you'll see blue rotate over here, and you'll see them just go grab the red orbs from the red people. And if you could turn the camera around, you would see the other team grab all the uh, orbs from the other people. Uh, there's some other random mechanics in this phase, like there's this boss, the bug just shoots a frontal. Uh, there's these scarabs that spawn that fix eight players that have a damage reduction on them that gets lower over time. That you have to, you can do any kind of CC or whatever you want on these ads, but they eventually obviously have to die. Uh, they used to spawn an orb if they meleeed you. They took that out. They just do damage, so just about not getting meleeed by them. Uh, there's web bombs. Why web bombs are relevant? They spawn on range players, and when you soak one of these web bombs. Uh, with another player in there, you will get a web connecting you to, which will deal dot damage, but you use those webs to stop this charge. So what happens in this fight is you will see the, the bug will charge towards the other boss, and if you have three web lines, once it hits the third one, it will stop the boss from hitting the wall and wiping you, and it will also give him a damage amp, and that is when you can... Uh, have everyone pop off and kill the boss. So right there, they just get the boss entangled. Uh, but it looks like all of their orbs are going to expire. They might get them. Uh, they ended up getting them all, I think. Let me look at their raid damage in a second. Okay, so you're going to see that, and then then the phase just does that again. Uh, and it looks like you're going to see them die here. This looks like a... This, this was an extremely difficult mythic test. I would say... I'm actually pretty confident this is the hardest mythic testing ever, like, in the history of testing mythic bosses. This, this doing this fight on mythic was about as hard as you could possibly make it. Uh... And what happens later through the fight, I, I wonder... Shit, I hope... I wish I could get a VOD of this. Um, does anyone... You, you, want, you just want, like, from Heroic? Yeah, I just need, like, a Heroic VOD where I can just show the two intermissions. Because they, 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 it all largely yeah. transfers to uh, to Mythic. It's just the Mythic mechanic happens as well. I have uh, my footage from there. Oh, good. Perfect. Here, I'll link it and then just skip ahead. Beautiful. Uh, so you talk about Swarm and then Caster. Is this P1 and P2? I don't know. That's uh, auto generated or something. I didn't make those. Oh, you. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's the first intermission. The boss. This is right after where you saw in the instant dollars video. So as you're watching this, just pretend that you would have to also be separated from everyone of your opposite color. So you saw instant dollars doing it in two camps. You could probably imagine that you're just doing this intermission in two camps. Okay. So it's like a memory game. The first one that comes out is the first one to go off. There's a proper safe spot. That one goes off. You move into it. And then also during this, there's pulses of damage that happen in this intermission on Mythic that require you to run to the other team to soak all of their orbs. Oh, I mentioned, I forgot to mention something earlier. Every time you soak an orb of the opposite color, if you ever soak three within 10 seconds, you are permanently dead and can't be res. So you can't have someone like go run through an immune soak all of them or soak all of them. You have to have everyone involved in soaking them or else you'll just wipe. Uh, so that is how you do this intermission. In my opinion, the intermissions are actually really sick. Do, do you think so? Like, I, I, like yeah. I think the intermissions are actually by far the best part of this fight. One of some of the best intermissions they've ever made. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say there's not there's not like a whole lot going on in this one, but it's definitely pretty fun to do. Yeah. Um, second phase, I will say, uh, well, actually, we'll get into this in P1 later. I'm just going to still kind of just describe the rest of the mechanics. In P2, uh, the boss is going to port away from you and suck everyone in. As you get sucked, you will leave an orb from where you got sucked from. So right after this, uh, you'll have to run and you can't run into the other team. I assume on Mythic, they won't, right? Like either maybe they won't. Uh, 
suck you directly under the boss, right? You're probably watching this and just like, hmm, how can how can we die if we touch the other team if this happens? It, it operates a little bit differently in Mythic. Um, and then you have uh, this. You have to get out of that circle, soak the orbs from where they came from. And then now these bosses like kind of stack a little easier, and the boss is going to put out some debuffs on players. So you see the debuffs on Mythic. There's five. You have a certain amount of time where you have to dispel all of these onto the boss. Every time you dispel them onto the boss, it gets a 25% damage increase, uh, stacking up to five. And then when you do the fifth one, it stops this cast that will kill you. It gives the boss a five second disorient, which is 125% damage amp. And then you just shit on the boss. And then that just kind of repeats two times. Uh, that's all of P2. There's also another frontal from the spider girl. Uh, and then second intermission happens. And I think this is probably the coolest part of the fight. So again, in Mythic, keep in mind, you're going to have to have 10 people completely spread uh, from the other 10 people. And you're going to have to find a way to rotate during this to get to their orbs while also soaking this in what you would imagine is also a more difficult to dodge uh, Mythic version of this mechanic uh, while doing enough damage to break the boss's shield to stop this intermission. Uh, I think this is so fucking sick. Uh... And then the last phase is both mechanics at once, kind of, but not all of them. The The phase is like slowed down a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, and then you just have to con continue doing that. So that, that's like the basic idea of the fight. Uh, okay, Dranos, what are your initial yeah. initial thoughts? So this seems really, 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 really hard. Like absolute nuclear difficulty potential here. Um it's one of those things where I, I feel like the mythic mechanic is a really cool idea. Uh, it's, I mean, like you said, it's basically Sire P3 mythic, right? Which I had a lot of fun doing that phase. It's it's kind of a cool combination of, you know, coordination strategy, but also reacting and uh, executing the mechanic well on every single person in the raid. The part that I'm a little bit skeptical of is it's already like a really mechanic spammy fight and you're adding a mythic mechanic that... Like, I think this is a really cool mythic mechanic. I'm not sure this is the right fight for it to go on. Um, and just, I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be omega difficult to the point where it has to end up getting nerfed and then nerfed in such a way where, you know, the fun part of executing a difficult mechanic like that might go away. That being said, I mean, the pre the premise, the, the I could see this by being by far the most fun, like, progression to do if you're really into that kind of stuff, which I am. So, uh, I'm hopeful but also definitely it's hard not to be like worried about a fight that was just this hard tested retested still just exactly ran it back. as yeah. hard yeah that was yeah. the really surprising thing to me is usually on testing they intentionally make things easier so you can see farther in the fight so they tested this the first time i'm assuming every guild just got absolutely farmed by this fight and then they tested it again and they announced it and you're like all right we're gonna see some big boss changes this week and they just ran it back so like that tells me that they're just definitely this is what we're getting right um and they're pretty comfortable with that i will say this fight just from watching a lot of pvs of it this fight is significantly easier with a good system uh i don't think i've seen like you can see here like what instant dollars is doing is like they have like one group on one boss, one group on the other boss, and like look how far they're running to like soak all this stuff. You will see things like when you get to this boss, you're talking like civilian versus slimy elitist. Like you're gonna get to this boss, and the version of this boss that you fight is you know, you're gonna have a set of things to do that are more repeatable and are designed to be more repeatable and less difficult than just like this. So, yeah, the move like stealing echo or liquid movement is gonna be correct uh is gonna make this a lot easier than it was in testing that's definitely true yeah because this is just like you said nuclear difficulty and like the first thing you need with nuclear difficulty is like a a a very set in stone system for how you deal with things and also something that's kind of really weird is in my opinion p1 is actually significantly harder than every other phase in this fight <laughs> so like the fact that they had this on testing it is like i i think the opinion of the boss is going to be at least a little um like off because like I think you're seeing the hardest part of the fight and I think that's actually one of my I'm gonna lower the grade on this later because I think this is gonna be kind of stone leech in generally and not mm. in that the triggering way I know you famously that's your least favorite fight of all time um that like stone leech in generally in the sense that I think you might kill the boss one of the first times you see the last phase yeah I mean I do think it is inherently bad for p1 to be the hardest part of a fight like it's okay if p1's hard but if P1 is hard and P3 is easy, like that is inherently, I think, unsatisfying and wrong. Yeah, and and maybe that won't be the case, right? There's a lot of time for that not to be the case. Um, so yeah. 
so yeah, I, I think there's that. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and say the concept. I think the concept is great. Like, really, really great. Like, I, I think the Denathrius mechanic, I'm glad they explored it more. Um, I think the way, like, if you look, if, if you were to just have someone watch, like, a boss design thing from any other MMO, and they were to just look at how the intermissions work with the Denathrius mechanic and not P1. I think P1 is, P1's kind of a mess. But the other phases make a bit more sense, are way less ass. I think, like, part of this, like, remember how much it was not fun to do... Uh, Council of Dreams and part of it was because those bosses annoyingly poured around and like you can't mm. get them together and it's like okay I wish they were just permanently separate or like there's just like this I mean this like look at P1 right like you're basically just fighting one boss and you don't, you don't even have a world of like trying to like stack them together it's just a complete meme so like uh, that I think is like a problem where that's just not the case for the rest of the fight um, and I don't know why they chose to do that in this phase specifically. I think that's a negative. Uh, but I, I think the concept of what they were given, I would give a pretty high grade. I, I don't know where you would land. Yeah, I think the concept, again, like I I love the mechanic. I love the mythic mechanic conceptually. I like the fight as well. That The part that I'm still not sure about is whether this was the right fight to, to deploy this mythic mm, mechanic on. I yeah. agree with you that the intermissions are, the intermissions clearly are. Like the doing that first intermission, doing that second intermission with the sire mechanic does seem really fun. Doing the main phases with the sire mechanic is one that I'm not yet sold on. Although again, I I take your point that it's going to be probably a lot more fun to do it with good movement than than with whatever the hell we were you know trying during testing and uh, that was way less efficient and way more likely to lead to traffic jams and stuff. But the, I mean, and by the way, I'm not even saying that against like, oh, like the public testing guilds are doing it bad. Like we have had so much time thinking about how you could even possibly do this phase well. And like our testings weren't a fucking walk in the park either. Like we were just like, holy fucking shit, this boss hard, right? So like, yeah. like this is not that. It's just that like, you know, I assume with a bunch of people doing this as their job for a while, I feel like we have a really good system for this. And it took us a long time to get to that point. I don't expect anyone to like, have that ready and set up and executing that well in testing like i said this is I, I think easily the hardest boss that's ever been tested uh so yeah i i give the concept at least like in i don't know like b plus minimum i i yeah i'm, I'm happy to go because a i think a plus would be like not only are you really happy to see this boss and really happy to see the denathrius mechanic but you're really happy to see the mix and i just don't know if either of us really agree that the mix is right and like but maybe it could be right but like i'm just not sure so that, and then execution. Um, again, really hard. The intermissions, the execution's fucking A+. Plus. I think the last phase, the execution is A+. Plus. I think in P2, the execution is like an A. And I think in P1, the execution is like a D. I think P1 is fucking trash. Like, it's really, really, really overwhelming trash. Uh, not being able to stack the bosses. Really fucking annoying movement. Uh, even when fully optimized, I just think the first phase, just it's just not good, right? Um, yeah, I was going to lean pretty low here, but I have only done P P1 of Mythic, so, uh, think that sounds fair. So you, you're, it's, it's better than, I, it's better than you'd think if you'd only done P1 is what you're saying. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, so a, or even, mean. or even like, even if any guild, regardless of how any guild, how far you got in testing, there is a public VOD of someone getting to the end of this boss in Mythic. You can, you can see what the bosses do, even though you're not seeing the people deal with it. So that's, that's, that is there for anyone to see. The, the, uh, okay, so execution, what did you say? Or something? I think if you were to just base it on what we've seen in mythic testing publicly, I think it would be extremely low. I think if you even theorize what the entire fight should look like, it should be higher than that. So I, I would, I would give it a B, I think. Replayability, I think. I think this is going to so be good. I, I think it's going to be a hard fight to slot in people who didn't do prog on. Definitely. But... I think the other parts of replayability, it should do fine. Yeah, anytime with. you see damage amps, this is a really weird damage amp fight. So, like, in P1, you have two very obvious ones with a charge. But in P2, it's, like, it's a 25 into a 50, into a 75, into a 100, into a 125, into a disorient 125. So, it's, like, really hard to optimize. So, I think, like, you're going to always have fun as a DPS player, like, getting better at doing damage on this fight. Um... I think the intermissions will always be fun to do. You'll kill it faster with more and more gear. You'll get out of intermissions faster, the second intermission. Uh, yeah, swapping in new people, absolute never do that. Also, I just think this is the kind of fight where you're going to pull it a couple hundred times, right? So I feel like it won't be that bad because the system will be so well ingrained in you that the replayability will be fine because it's just actual muscle memory. Like, you just can't do it wrong, right? So... I feel like that matters too. Like if it's replayability as everyone's yelling at every pull, that's going to feel horrible, but that's just not how you're ever going to be able to kill this. So, uh, I don't, I don't fucking know. It can't be higher than the execution, right? So 
Yeah, like a B minus or something. Yeah, B minus. Slimy elitist. This is where it's got to get its best rating, right? Like, yeah, this has to be like a because I mean, like I I'm worried about this fight mostly because I'm worried about it being like only fun for for high end guilds. Maybe not even fun for high end guilds, but I, I it's hard to imagine that this won't be fun even if they screw it up in the ways that it looks like they might. It's hard to imagine that it won't still be fun for like like the second top to few guilds. second to last bosses that are not private aura nonsense yeah have an extremely high hit rate so like just alone i think that's there however this is this is proposed to be harder than it's it is objectively like mechanically harder than any other second to last boss that's ever existed no question uh like as it currently stands so like it's kind of new territory but it has to get at least an a i think for that it's the only thing it's yeah. gonna get from that civilian I like though i mean this is tendril on crack like yeah if this you... seems like a d at best for civilians yeah like but... if this if tendril killed your guild this this is going to like make your guild not even log in so uh yeah this would have this... to be a d if your guild survived tendril like barely this is going to be the nail in the coffin for sure yeah or just not available like incomplete like your guild won't kill well actually no, that's just not true though like that's you are going to have this i mean this theoretically should be okay actually let's talk about this so this should be the easiest cutting edge to get, right? Because you're going to have more gear than the first kill than ever, probably, just alone. And then you're going to have the stacking percent buff that goes to whoever knows however much. But the weird thing is, is with that existing, that also, and I think the main reason they did this, is that is in place of nerfs, right? Like, the reason you do that is so you don't have to nerf the boss more. I suspect they will still have to nerf this boss. Correct. That's the thing. I don't think gaining gear and gaining percent damage and healing increase makes this fight easier it's all in the mechanics right so like i feel like you are you're kind of stuck with uh you're you're yeah i don't know I, I think you're right but then maybe the civilian rank could be higher right because like you're gonna get all these ramping damage and health things and then they're gonna have to just because of the sheer difficulty they're gonna have to still nerf this so it might be just like a total joke right but that's i guess you can't really plan on that yeah okay final grade on three Three, two, one, C. B. B. Okay. We'll go B. B minus. B minus. B minus for the difference, yeah. Okay. Very, very polarizing fight, I think. Also, I think there's a chance that you could see some changes to this boss bef after you watch this and before this boss comes out, I think. And if they're going to do anything, it would be something in P1. I think P1 is the only phase that is, like, really problematic. Uh, like, for example, do you know what P2 used to be? We were watching this VOD here. So so how this fight used to work is in P2, um, when you do the, like, dispel thing. So every single time you dispelled one of the five debuffs on the boss, which you have to do in a very short amount of time, it spawned an orb on every player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that no longer does that, right? So, like, you know, they, they've identified some uh, things in the fight that are completely ridiculous and, and removed them, so... Uh, making some of the phases a, a bit easier, right? Because I think I think objectively the hardest thing in this fight, it's I don't even think it's close, is doing the charge correctly in P1 while soaking every orb and having good web bomb position and not being in hell. Like doing this, what they're doing right here is by far the hardest part of the fight. Like if the charge was not there, this fight would be so easy. Uh, but like web bombs and that are a huge problem. Um, I don't even know how much we really want to talk about Queen Ants Rec. I feel like I feel like it's should almost be done completely differently. Like, we should just, like, give Queen Anserek a, like, guess this boss's level, because it's just so up in the air. Yeah. I'll give you guys a general breakdown of Queen Anserek. I'm not even going to talk mechanically, because I don't... I think you're just going to have to see that, and, and so much of that is stuff that we've prepared for, like, our raiders to see, or we'll prepare, and, like, we're not going to just fucking rip that on, on broadcast, and then also... uh, But I can just give you, like, general fight design. Um, and hopefully this isn't outdated, but like, like you fight the boss initially and it's a spider and you're fighting it on a bottom platform and then you, sp and then you get to a certain percentage and then you go into like this giant intermission and this giant intermission is the boss is like crawling up its little spindle. What does a spider crawl up? I think it's a spindle. That sounds right. Okay. So the spider's crawling up her spindle to the other platform and then you are not fighting the boss at this point. You now split into two 10-man groups and do a intermission phase, kind of very similar to Razageth, right? And then you keep jumping up these platforms as each group of 10 people, dealing with some, I'm assuming, very difficult, uh, very difficult ads. And then you land on the top platform where the boss had spindled to, crawled up its spindle. And then you fight the boss there until it dies. That's like the basic 
thing in the fight. I guess if you want to do something weird, how have bosses been historically that have any verticality involved? Either the boss crawling or going into the sky or falling through the floor. Those are those have a pretty high hit rate, right? So the Nathrius, yes, Black Senarth. Hand, Senarth. <laughs> okay, end bosses. End bosses that fall through floors or crawl through ceilings. Fallen Avatar is kind of an end boss. That's sort of like that. Fallen Avatar banger, Black Hand banger, Denathrius banger. All I'm saying yeah. is, have there any been ever there ever been end bosses where you go into the sky or through the floor that suck? Razagath, you you adjust your elevation between those platforms. Uh, that one doesn't help me make my point, so I'm gonna disallow that. All right, I respect it. Is there another one near end boss? Alakir the Windlord. Oh, okay, come on. I don't know, was Alakir even a good fight? I have no idea. Ancient. Shit. I don't know either. Okay, well, the few examples we've given recently are all good. So Queen Anserek has to be good because yeah. the average level of ceiling crawlers or floor destroyers are extremely, extremely high. Jaina, yeah. kind of, Jaina's a good fight. That's just about as weird as the other one mentioned, but that one helps my point, so I'll allow it. Yeah, as long as we look at a very specific subset of just the good fights, it does really well. It does really well, yeah. So I'm assuming Queen Anserek has to be pretty high. Uh, also, she has a massive ass. That That's boss. true. That, I don't know if you've seen that. That's pretty crazy. Um, it's at hard least, not to have seen it. At least not. Wait, is there is there a crab mode version of, of, uh, of Queen Anserek? There has to be, right? I don't know. Maybe she's got a big claw. <laughs> Instead of the, was it the abdomen? Uh... All right, so do you have any thoughts on this boss, by the way? No, not really. I, I have looked at the Dungeon Journal like once or twice, but much less than you have, I'm sure. Okay, so the last uh, couple end bosses that we've had. So we've had Firek, which you said is the best fight ever, I think, even though you hate 80% of it. Best fight of this expansion. Okay, best fight of this expansion. Sarkareth was good. Razageth bad on Mythic. Uh, before that... What do we got? We got Jailer. J Jailer, not not great. Sylvanas. Sylv, pretty bad. I think Sylvanas is underrated, but I... It's sort of like Firak where it had a really banger P3, but then the rest of the fight sucks. I still think P1 Sylvanas is fine. Like, a, like I think it's like a good end boss P1. And P2, I think, on Mythic is very similar like Vigilant Guardian, where I think people think of it Heroic. Gets better, yeah. I think they think of Heroic when they think... Like, P2 uh, Sylvanas Heroic is abysmal, but, like, Mythic moves pretty good. Uh, and, yeah, P3 is amazing. But, yeah, and then what was... Uh, and Denathrius is obviously a huge, huge banger. Um, so the levels, how many of them, how many end bosses have been bad in the last two expansions? Like, like actually bad. I think the, for me, it's just Sylv, but I know you're not a huge fan of Jailer. Oh, no, it'd be, I don't oh, think Raz, Jailer is yeah, bad. Raz, no, Raz, Raz, sure. Razageth is definitely bad. Yeah. 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 So, and that was the first boss, but the other first boss of an expansion was Denathrius, which was great. So like those meet in the middle to be average. Max, give us something more to think about this fight. Can you do a raid plan, please? See, that's exactly what I don't want to do. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, hmm. All right. We're giving Queen Anserek a rating on the count of three. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, A. A. Yeah. Oh, woo, it's going to be good. Look at that. It's, uh, dude, you gotta, you gotta be optimistic about things like this. If you're, if you're ever coming in and you're like, I don't know much about this. It's going to suck. Instead of, I don't know much about this. It's probably going to be great. You know, we're playing a video game for fun here. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, so people have this in chat. They'll have a full heroic week to look at the fight anyway. Very true. Like, like that'll that. Oh wait, are you mentioning that to like as to why I wouldn't do a raid plan, or are you mentioning that as to like uh oh like like, it like well, it'll be it'll be Razageth tuned incident. and made. I mean, there is no argument to this. Fights will be objectively less buggy and better tuned with a heroic week than the alternative of there not being one. Like that's inarguable well, obvious uh situation it'll be really funny if they screw it up with more not impossible but it'd be really well you mean funny. yeah they i mean they they could always screw things up but it would always be more yeah. screwed up if there wasn't it, exactly. a, we it, a week it, of free information it's it like the same level of screw up would be like three times less likely or something yeah all right fuck yeah let's go Woo. so where would so what what is the overall raid quality then you'd have to just i look think this is the, looking very high like yeah let's scroll through it so we got first boss, kind of whatever. But interesting for us, I think the first boss doesn't really matter very much. But for yeah. I think a lot of people, the first boss is actually what they interact with the most. So like, it's kind of a weird duality. Uh, uh, first boss, not great. Second boss, great. Sikran, great. Rashanan, AI created. Uh, Ovenax, 
not great. There, there's a world where Ovenax is good, I think. But it's, I think it's like overall average, like won't be very good. And then Nexus Princess, this this boss has a potential to be Rashok Sludge Fist here for sure. Uh, has has all a uh, Rygon has all has all of the stuff working for it. This could be one of the all time great bosses. Silken Court. I actually am so not sure on Silken Court. Like if you put a gun to my head and we're like, you have to decide right now whether Silken Court will be looked at as one of the best bosses ever or one of the worst bosses ever, I would not be, I would just die. Like, I don't like there's, I, I think it has about as much of a chance to be amazing as it does to be dog shit and nowhere in between. It is hard to imagine it just being forgettable average. Yeah. 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 Like, they, yeah, there's no version of Silken Court that's average, right? It, it has to be fucking incredible and they fully pull this off or it is such, such a problem that everyone hates it. But like, what does the average version even look like? It's like, yeah, it's so fine. The the way they make it average is like you do some pretty serious nerfs to the numbers on like you make it so that oh people can soak five orbs of the opposite color instead of three and like yeah but then that's not a two hundred three hundred pull but like if you're gonna pull yeah. a boss two hundred three hundred times there are only two outcomes awful or amazing there yeah. like like when was the last time you killed something that took two hundred pulls that people have average lukewarm opinions on it doesn't happen <laughs> it's just too much time <laughs> yeah a hundred percent um. Okay, and then Queen Anserek, obviously, uh, very in-depth analysis. We rated this an A, so uh, that has got to be great as well. So overall, I mean, overall is looking like an A minus B plus, right? Yeah, I mean, this is, I think, B plus. very high potential tier, especially because, like, a lot of the stuff we complain about is, you know, front-loaded at the start of the tier that we care less about. Like you said, that might make it worse for other people, but I, I think at the end of the day, like, even if you're a low-end Mythic Guild, that means you're interacting with the end bosses on Heroic a lot, which... What we didn't really talk about was, are these bosses going to scale well between Heroic and Mythic, right? Like, obviously, there's some fights like Razageth where it's just a, a banger How can on you Heroic know? and then a disaster on, on Mythic. Okay, well, okay, well, so... I think Silken Court, for instance, is one where, like, that looks like it's going to be really fun on Heroic because, like, a lot of the potential problem with it is the Mythic mechanic interaction. Yeah, but, like, would there be any way to know, based on Razageth Heroic, that her Razageth Mythic would be bad, right? No. There, w there isn't. Like, you do Heroic, and you're like, this is incredible. They just need to make this 30% harder, and it's an amazing Mythic boss, and then they just did that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it is very much a unknown thing about the raid. But it, what it means is, like, even if the first boss Mythic sucks, the last boss Heroic could still be great, and then a lot of the people who, you know, pull the first boss Mythic a bunch will still have a good time with the team. Ooh, someone in chat had a great idea. Pull count guess for every boss. Oh, yeah. Let's Hell fucking yeah. slam that. Let me put that under everything here. This is like world first pull count? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do both. World first pull count and then like average pull count. Yeah, after... so like the first number would I'll just do like first number slash second number. First number is world first, second one is uh is uh after that. Is like average of the first few hundred guilds or something, or first of, of like all guilds that do it over the tier? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Just kind of wave our hands about it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Ulgrax, pull count and race world first one. Yeah. Pull count for the average guild. Let's actually, is it, is it WoW stats? What's the thing that has... Yeah, progstats.io, I think. Progstats.io. I'm really interested to look what the first boss looks like. Please tell me there's no absolutely horrible awakened shit in here. There's not good. Okay, uh, Gnarl Root. Pull count, like, what it... So this reads as, like, in, what, 90% of people pulled it less than five times? That's the... That's what this says? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not exactly what it says. So that's 310 versus... 100 oh that's way less than that so it's like oh, oh yeah. typical pull count on the left okay one to six so so gnarl ruby one to six that's i mean it's the first boss probably maybe six right for maybe i feel like four i wouldn't be surprised if bulgrax is a little bit harder than gnarl root but i'm not i also think there's something to be said as well this is kind of metagamey for this but the first boss of an expansion people are going to be more under geared pulling it than they are later bosses of expansions yeah so I think there will be some guilds pulling it first week that, you know, rack up a little 30 or 40 on that thing. Okay. So I would say like 10, maybe. Okay. I like it. All right. Again, like I think many guilds are going to one or two shot it, not just the race world first guilds, but I think that m people will wipe on it more than they wiped on Naruto. Right? No, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I can also just see them getting to the intermission and then just dying to the frontals. Like I think the frontals and the yeah. intermission are probably harder than everything that happens on... There's not an insta kill mechanic on the first boss. I mean, it's not even an insta kill. You don't. It doesn't even kill you. Um, well, you can get insta killed on Naruto if you stand under the middle of the boss during the intermission. I've seen that many a time. Oh, really? I did not know that. That's okay. right. Bloodbound horror. Uh, definitely one shot. Although, yeah. no, no, it's definitely one shot. I was actually gonna say sick ran. Can there can be an easy wipe on that? But uh, well, so when we're talking about world first pull counts here, we're talking about Liquid and Echo, or are we talking about the guild that goes in on Tuesday and pulls it forty times and gets world first? Oh fuck, you're right. <laughs> yeah. That is way less likely to happen with a heroic week because 
That's true. You yeah. are well. Actually, no, what are you, you guys going to do first on Tuesday of, of Mythic Week? Probably. I won't. Go I won't. Mythic, I won't, I won't tell you what exactly not, we're but doing. Like, I suspect but there will be guilds that go into Mythic before we you guys. will. We will absolutely be pulling Mythic bosses on the first day. Yes, but whether yes. we do that right away or not, yes. So I, I guess you're right. Someone could go in potentially before us if we decided to do literally anything. Yeah. Let, let's just say this is like you know, Echo or Liquid pull count, not. Uh, yeah. I. Not you know early shift or whoever it is that goes for it. Yeah. Also depends on how they tune raids, because, like, are they going to tune raids a little harder because people have one more week of gear going into... I don't know. It's weird. Uh, yeah. Okay. The Bloodbound Horror. I would think definitely more than 10. Well, let's look at uh, prog stats. Where the fuck did that go? Oh, we're looking at it on my screen right now. That's crazy. Uh, Agira took 7 to 21. Really? Okay. So, I mean, Bloodbound Horror is harder than Agira, right? It's got to be. Yes. I think it will be. So I think this is like a, yeah, 25. 25, 25-er. All right, Sikran, I would, okay, I'm just going to say two, like, just because you will likely wipe the, f if you ever have five, let someone come within five yards of someone else, like, you'll just say it before the pull, like, hey, guys, make sure this is the first pull, like, make sure if you're ever going to be in a wrong spot, you're fucking 10 yards away from someone rather than four. Right, you just play it extra safe. But like I could the fact that that should instantly kill you, like it doesn't actually instantly kill you on testing, like it just blows up instantly and only does one pulse of damage, but I think it should probably kill you. Uh it's gotta be I'm just gonna say randomly say two. Like I, it wouldn't surprise me if we one shot this, but I would also wouldn't be surprised if like you had a random stupid wipe to this for sure. Yeah, I like two for world first, sure. And then like I think this is another twenty five er for uh the average. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Rashi. That's got to be a one for World First. Yeah, right? yeah, this is a very, very. Easy. I think this is one of those ones where if you wipe to this encounter, you, you call it quits. You're out. Hang up the old hat. <laughs> you are done. All right. Yeah. Maybe another 25er? I mean, it's not, not too much harder than. I suspect this is easier than the others for. Correct. Well, the triangle also... mechanic, I could just see a couple people just not getting it. But it's I, really I the I think only that mechanic thing. is really obvious. Like, I mean, I'm sure that there will be wipes to it, but I don't think there will be 25 wipes to it. I, I think this is like a 15er. Okay, 15er. Goddamn. All right, Brood Twister Ovenax. Uh, I could see give it... me like thirty and a hundred. Interesting. Okay, I could I could see this dying in in less than five pulls, but I also could also see it dying in thirty. You want to say thirty? I'll take it a little lower. I'll say twenty. Twenty. Yeah, you, twenty and then something. Yours. What's the other one? I think a hundred. I like. I think this is gonna be a hundred large pull count for the uh, the old masses. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, like, kind of in the same spot in the raid, like, Laridar and Naimu are. And, like, I'm even looking at that, and even those, I think, are both easier than Brood Twister, and they're even 20 to 47, so, like, maybe you're right. Yeah, 100 might be a little bit overestimate. It might be 70 or something, but... Yeah, no, I like it. All right, Nexus Princess Kaiveza. So, big question in every raid is, like, when is the boss where they're... where Blizzard says, all right, only these kinds of guilds are getting here this week so this boss we can just make an absolute demon right last year that was clearly tendril and they never considered liquid or echo at all when they were tuning smolderon for example so like i don't know how that looks maybe i could see nexus princess dying immediately uh because it's not tuned for us but even then smolderon still took us like i don't know 40 pulls 50 60 something like that i don't even remember um even though 15 of those were spent trying a gateway strat but uh what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, this like? I kind of feel like this is going to be like, like maybe this is one where it's the same pull count between race world first guilds and later guilds. It is one of those kinds of fights. Yeah. Because like maybe you... like a 120 or something. Woo! That would be twice as hard as Sludge Fist. That's crazy. Uh, or I okay, guess maybe... not hard, but twice as long. Yeah. Tuned. I don't know. I mean, you're right. Like it, a lot of it does depend on the initial tuning, but I feel like they will want it to be hard and they'll have the numbers to, you know, facilitate that with the heroic week. Interesting. Uh, so, so you would say after last raid, where people like complained about Tindril and Fire Act difficulty? Well, yeah, Tindril and Fire Act difficulty. A problem with Tindril and Fire Act difficulty was that there weren't bosses earlier in the raid that kept you from getting there until you had more gear. Okay. And, uh, more ramp. I'm trying to think, when was the last time a like boss like this took a hundred pulls? Has it ever happened? For Race World first? Yeah. You know, like like Vagalon is kind of the closest, but that's obviously that was later the in second the to last boss. That was yeah, yeah. totally different. Yeah. The huh. 
It's like in a choice node before this, like there's a clear second to last boss and it's Silken Court and Nexus Princess is a choice between this and Brood Twister. That's where it is in the raid. I, I would, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 60 pulls for world first. Okay. I think. If you do 60, I think, it, I think, it, I think it's like a 60, 90. If it's, if it's 60, I think it's a 90 for the average. Okay. I think that makes but sense. But if it's 120, I think it's 120 for both. And then if it's 180, I think it's 150 that, that for. Yeah. Pulls. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Silken Court. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Give me 300, 500. <laughs> I think we'll kill this boss pretty fast. Um, all right. but it's a second to last boss. And like historically, like, okay, so here's what I think. So we, I said last time that we would kill Tendril in 20 pulls and then they just made the boss a hundred times harder. Like, I mean, it's a completely different fight from testing till it came out. Which does make you remember that, like, they oftentimes make these a lot harder. So let's just assume they're going to make this a lot harder from testing. Well, but maybe, yeah. On the other hand, if it seems hard, maybe it'll be easier. And if it seems easy, maybe it'll be harder. Yeah, so. Tindra was a joke on testing, and this boss was the hardest boss ever on testing. So, like... Yeah, bosses like Agira and Shriekwing were hard on testing. Like, basically, if I, I'm, I'm basically saying this is how fast we would kill this based on it being the version that was in testing. And I don't think it's going to be harder than that, right? It'd be almost impossible to assume it'd be harder than that. So, uh, I don't know. What'd you say? You said 300. We'll just go with whatever you I think. I said 300, 500. Yeah, sure. All right. 300, <laughs> now, 500. Uh, look, if I'm wrong about this, I think I'm wrong and I'm overestimating, not underestimating. God, I hope I am wrong yeah. in that direction. Because it's just weird. Like, the fight gets easier as you go on. You're basing most of your difficulty off of seeing only the first phase. And also, yeah. you're not visualizing a very well-made system for it. So, it's, like, kind of hard. But yeah. I, I, Exactly. Like, I think I'm probably wrong. But that that would be uh, that would be my guess. Like not gun to my head, but uh, that's my guess. Now, if they so left the dispels in P two mm. and orb soaking, like you'd add a decent bit for sure. All right, and then Queen Anserek, we know nothing about. Uh, I guess we're basically just randomly guessing between pull count of random end bosses, which was uh, Fire Act was like, like three hundred. Yeah. Yeah, Denathrius was one thirty. Uh, Sarkareth was. Like a little over a hundred. Razageth was a lot. Well, some bosses got nerfed. All right, we're gonna say the pull count guess at the end of uh at the end of three. At, okay. Counted three. Three, two, one, one hundred and eighty. One sixty-two. All right, meet in the middle at uh somewhere one seventy. One seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's fucking go. Which would also I think one important variable as well is like the longer you're progging Silken Court, the less pulls you're gonna get on Queen Anserac as well. So. If Silicon Court is easier, then that pull count on Queen Anserac Well, then it's goes weird. It depends on the reset, right? One. It depends on yeah. the reset. Because, like, if Silicon Court takes most of your first week, then you'll spend yeah. a little bit learning Queen Anserac, but then you're going to be doing Queen Anserac with second week's gear, which, right. like, exactly. reduces the pull count significantly. That's like Sire, for instance. Sire had way That's fewer exactly what happened on Sire. Bro, if much. we had to kill Sire in first week gear or even had to do our progression in first week gear, but in 300 pulls, yeah. right? So, yeah, that, that totally changes things, so... That, that that does kind of line up that has happened when super long second to last bosses like really long usually end up in faster last bosses just because you hit the reset um but also like they're they kind they used to do this like okay here's an example sire denathrius was tuned in week one for like exactly what was possible with week one gear and then you got week two gear and then it was like a lot easier what they're a little bit more conscious of now is blizzard is like more aware of when bosses are likely to die and what week they're likely to die. And they end up tuning these bosses like right up, like they tune Firak right up until the fucking instant we killed Tendril. Like they're constantly, constantly tuning these end bosses for basically to be possible with whatever gear we have at that time. Uh, so it's possible that like if you killed Silken Court on a Monday, it would not surprise me at all if they knew it was going to go to the reset and they just buffed Queen Anserex health by like 15% or something. Like they, they've done shit like that. So that, that compared to how it was with Denathrius, they've changed their tuning philosophy a little bit. So uh, I think that will could potentially happen. Alrighty. And then how long do you think the race lasts? What's your what's your guess? Uh, You're a caster, so you hope it's like fucking 100. Give oh it, yeah, give me give yeah. me a seven year race. Yeah, that day, that, right. that day rate just keeps fucking going. That's right. Uh, I will say nine days. That's what I would say too. I mean, that's that's the that is the, the average like, is like nine or ten. That is the right? quintessential yeah. average race is nine days. So I agree with that. All right. Fuck yeah. Woo. Woo. All right. Thanks All right. for thanks for the talk, buddy.
that was fun. Looking forward to doing this exact same list, but right after the race. And then again, like a few months down the line, find some other angle reason to talk about all the bosses and list them or something. Yep. Always fun to do. And then I'll, uh, we record potty C very late tonight. So that should be fun. Oh yeah. Define very late. Usual later, later than late usual. Uh, I'm playing at seven 30. And then depending on how tired I am, I might also play at nine. And then that okay. would make me, I'm going to be home by 11, no matter what. Okay. So I'll, but it, it I'll might be, be, be even right, yeah. yeah. See you then. All right. See you.